everybody, this is Deborah, and you're watching Teens on Fire. Don't touch that dial. Bye. We're fun. We're pretty. We're cool. We're intelligent. We're spiritual. We're good looking. We're on fire. Unstoppable. Yes, we are. Hello everyone, welcome to Teens on Fire. <laughs> on today's episode, we are talking about careers. Whose responsibility is it to decide the teenager's career? Is it God, our parents, our teachers at school, or we, the teenagers? This promises to be an exciting episode. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. What's up, people? You're watching things on fire. Don't go anywhere. Keep it real. Don't change the channel because you're watching Teens on Fire. Welcome back. Today we are looking at teens and career choices. We'd like to ask a few questions today. For example, to the audience, whose responsibility is it to decide the teenager's career? Akechi, what do you think? Whose responsibility? Um, I think it's God's responsibility, our responsibility, our parents' responsibility, responsibility and our teacher. So you think it's all of them? Yes. Okay, why? Why do you think so? Um, I think it's God's responsibility first because God um, gives us, he tells us what we want, what he wants us to be. And God has his reason for everything he tells us. Mm -hmm. And I think it's our parents' responsibility because God puts them under... God puts us under their care, yeah. so they should be able to, um, like, interfere in our life. They should um, be able to tell us what we are supposed to do because they know the right way to follow. Mm -hmm. And our teachers come in; they teach us. They teach us the right things to do, like what we want to do. Our teachers um, direct us on the paths to follow, and it's also our choice because we, whatever we know, we are good at we can just follow our dream and become whatever. Wow, that's a very well-rounded answer. <laughs> I think we're going to have to expand more on each of those, but looking at, let's look at the first one, looking at God. Um, Lillian, what do you think, how do you think God is involved in what we want to be when we're older? Firstly, as a Christian, God created everybody. Mm -hmm. So as a Christian, you're accepting God, um, Jesus Christ into your life. Like it has a specific role, an important role to play in your life. When you choose, when you make a choices, like for example, talking about um, choosing a career, when one choose a career, we look at what is in line with God's word. Mm. So when we want to choose a career, we don't say, oh, okay, because I'm good at this, and it's not in line with God's word. Like it doesn't really speak well of us. So, so we should well speak, for our yeah, lives. yeah. So we should choose a career that really speaks well of us as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we want something in which we can represent God and like represent the character of the Spirit in us, a career where we can shine, but shine for God. So Christian, back to you. What do you think about God with regards to career choices? With regards to career choices, what do I think about God? Yes, what do you think about God? Honestly, to me, I think that teachers, parents, us, have no say in this matter. God chooses our career. After really? all, that's why he's called God. Everything we need to do, we're supposed to consult God about it. And it's not really up to us, because God knows best. So before you think about anything, don't even think about anything. Go straight to the Bible. I think man was designed to listen to the word. We're designed to listen. We're designed to use our senses or what mm. we think. Like for example, in the um, in the in Genesis, when when um, Adam told God that he was naked, God told him, "Who told you?" That represents that everything we should do should be something which we should have been told, and we should have been told by God. So if it's about career, it's God and God only that decides our career. Yes. I think a couple of people in the audience have opinions about that. Sorry. Um, Kristen, you were saying 
it all has to do with God. Yes. I totally disagree. I'm not totally. Like, I disagree. When you said it all has to do with God. When it comes to a family where a parent will come up and say, no, you must study this. What do you think they should do? What would you do? Yes. If really what you, you are going to do is actually God's will. As the popular song says, God will make a way if there seems to be no way. Okay. So even if your parents refuse to pay your school fees or go to the side, if it's really God's will, it's, it's all going to work out for our good. If, you really, if it's really God's will. Yes. Okay. I personally disagree with that, but I'm sure some other people in the audience have opinions. So does anyone have anything to comment on Christian's opinion? Yeah, Deborah. I personally do not agree with um, Christian. I don't concur with what he said, but I think he's right on the path that it's up to God to tell us what we're supposed to be because he formed us after all. He knew us before we even knew ourselves. Exactly. But as he has deposited something in us, we are, it's up to us to find that thing. It's up to our parents to help us, to guide us. It's up to the teachers to be able to grow on what, to develop on what we have found, what talent or interest that we have found. So it's not solely God's responsibility. He obviously knows what we're supposed to be even before we know ourselves. We know ourselves, but he's the one, he, like our parents and teachers and ourselves have each have a role to play in character. Um, I agree with what Deborah said because as our pastor always says, like it's not a whatever will be will be case. It's not you can't just sit back and leave God to like sort your life out. He's put us here and he's put something in us. He's given us the Holy Spirit, like Deborah said. So we have something in us and he's given us like he's given us a will and he's given us a mind so that we can figure out what it is we're passionate about and find a way to make it good for God and good for people. That's what I think. <laughs> so um, we, you talked about God, teachers, what else do you talk about, could you? Um, teenager in concern and parents. And parents. Okay, so parents, what do we think about like our parents with regards to career choices? Because I know some parents, like you were saying, they're very opinionated. They all they want us to do one thing. So I don't know. What do you think about that, Lily? Like, what I think about that is that sometimes parents are they they want you to like they want you to study that thing because they think it's good. Yeah. But as a teenager, like you just have to like make them. You don't need to like okay, I don't want to study this. I don't want to study that. I don't want to study. I want to study me because okay. I know what I want and I want to study. Like, you just have to like, make them understand. You don't have to use first. Like, yeah. okay, they are your parents. Yes, they have every right to. They have every right to tell you this because they brought you, like, they, they, they saw you when you were growing up. So they know what you're good at. Mm. So it's for you to tell them that, no, like, make them understand, explain things, make them know that. And if they keep insisting, that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And that's why we, that's why we, know, we know how to pray. So we pray. So you won't be rude and tell your parents that you're not going to listen to them at all. Yeah. But so they have a say, but we also have a say. Yes. So Just make them understand. Say. What do you think about that, Christian? In my opinion, it doesn't pay to fire your parents. Trust me, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Because <laughs> without your parents, there's really not much you can do. But today's nowadays parents, they're wise, they're smart. So first of all, they're smart. So when they want you to go to a career. They're very subtle about it. They know how to push you or steer you in that direction, even if it's not really your own will. They know how to subtly impose their will on you. And also, they, they want you to do the things they do because they are wise, they've learned from their experiences. But then another thing that we have to realize is that we don't want to be our parents. We want to be ourselves. Maybe your parents are a lawyer. If you keep on, if you follow exactly what they say, by the time you end up being a lawyer, but a better lawyer than them because they've they obviously made some mistakes. So if you, if you follow exactly what your parents say, you're not going to go with the same path, but maybe go further than what they did. But then our lives are entirely different. It's unique. And the thing is that the ages have changed. Times have changed. Some things that might have worked in the past might not necessarily apply to now. Like, for example, to me, honestly, I don't see why... It's the system, I understand, but I don't see why we need to learn something. Because nowadays, if you go to the real world and you ask someone a question, all they just need to do is bring out their phone type some things in and they have the information readily available. So many things that were necessary before have become obsolete 
and the entire environment has changed. Back in the days, you could come out and get a job now, but the unemployment is everywhere. Different things. Before, well, if you had all A stars now, you could get into any, any investing as well, but there are too many smart people now. They, so they want something extra. They want the extra, maybe the community service, the sports, or something like that. So times have changed. Many of the things that our parents did. So we need to have that, combine that new insights, that new revelations that we have as teenagers, as young ones living in this current day world and combine it with the wisdom and the intent that our parents have picked up over the years to decide what they say. So really, our parents have an influence, but they don't have the majority of influence. They should not have the majority of influence. They should not be the main decisive body in this, mm. this situation. Thank you. I think I can relate with what Christian was saying because at my school, like my school was built in like the 19th century, so it's quite old and there's the girls that used to be in my school at that time obviously are very different from the girls that are in my school right now. So you could see that like there's a difference in the opportunities that we have back then. Maybe they could only be like nurses or receptionists and things like that. But now you can be anything you want. So there's a wider breadth of things now that the times have changed. Um, we're going to go on a short break, but stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be discussing the role that teachers and ourselves, what we have to say about career choices that affect us. Stay where you are. What's up, people? You're watching Things on Fire. Don't go anywhere. Keep it up. Don't change the channel because you're watching Teens on Fire. Watching things on fire, don't change that dial. Don't change the channel because you're watching Teens on Fire. Welcome back to Teens on Fire. <laughs> now, we're going to be talking about the influence of teachers in a teenager's career choice. Um, Deborah, what do you have to say concerning that? I think teachers have a role to play in teenagers' career choice because um, after the teenager has discovered what they're passionate about, they have to go to school and then the teenager has to be the one to impact more knowledge about that particular, um, that particular field that the teenager has, uh, has begun to like, that kind of thing. So teachers help you to grow or develop that, um, that dream or that, um, that, that desire that you have, that passion that you have. Yeah. Okay, now, there's a question that we all in our hearts have always asked ourselves and I've always thought about, but we've never really dished it out well. Are there careers that automatically give you an advantage over other career choices? Can anyone please answer that? Um, actually, no. You see, um, 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 just like um, in the um, ecosystem, there's, there's, a, there's a balance, you understand? So every, every creature in the ecosystem is unique, 
has its own purpose. So you understand? So in, 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 in the same way, in the system where we have careers, there is no career that has an advantage over another. Mm. Because if I'm, um, let me say, a, neuro, a neurosurgeon, for instance, I'm going to have to put my money in the bank. And the banker has to be there to attend to me. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So there is always um, a balance. Each person needs another. You understand? So I don't, I don't think there's, there's any career that, ha that gives you, that has advantage over another. Oh, thank you. Uh, that, was very, that was a very beautiful an analogy. And the point you're trying to say is, was very excellent. And I, I think that, honestly, people have to take responsibility. The career doesn't decide, doesn't determine your success. It doesn't give you an advantage. It's the individual that has the advantage. Because there was a book I was reading on management, and they told you, they told me, don't move someone from one department to the other department because they're not being productive. That there's a tendency that wherever department they go to, they won't be productive. And then someone who is successful, if you move him to another department, even if it's a department that's down in the gutters, he will make that department success. So your career is not the career that decides the success, not the career that, that decides the impact you make. It's you as an, an individual. Be in tune with God's word, develop yourself, invest in yourself. Yourself should be the biggest investment you have. And you will, t you will turn that career into anything. Even if you want to just polish shoes, be the best shoe polisher in this world. Take shoe polishing to the next level. Own shoe polishing factories, shoe polishing places. Make it a worldwide shoe polishing multi-million dollar business. That's what we're supposed to do. As you, you, and if you, and if someone, even if you have the career of someone that, that Every time, if anyone has a career that they always make billion, they always make books. If you don't, if you're not, if you're like a desical, if you are lazy, if you don't have the attitude for it, no matter which career you put in, you make a failure. You rubbish that career. You rubbish the industry. You rubbish the economy. Whatever country you're in, you can't do it. So please, the career that has no advantage is you that has the advantage or disadvantage. So develop yourself and make an impact. Thank you. So it's about what you have inside of you, not where you are or the career that you want to go after, which I think makes a lot of sense because as Christians, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, which is the biggest advantage that we can possibly have. So it doesn't matter where we're put, it doesn't matter what career, what department, what school or what, like, what country we find ourselves in. It's about the Holy Spirit in us, which causes whatever we do to be successful. So even if um, someone, want, even if I want to be an artist or I want to be a neurosurgeon, I would be equally successful at either because I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. Wow, that's Can such an interesting idea. Yeah, um, it was all. I, I remember in, in, in the past, let me say like uh, five years ago, five, six, seven years ago, um, any young person that tells his parents, I want to be an artist, I'm like, shut up, don't, 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 don't think about it. Because they thought, um, artists were always broke. But look at the world today. Um, if you're an artist, whether you draw or you sculpt or you paint or you do graphics, you make big bucks. So it's, it's not about the career. It's about the person, the individual, mm. you understand? It's just about investing in yourself, putting in the right thing, you understand? Um, knowing your own part, knowing um, Knowing your own, um, um, how do I put it? Knowing um, your own, strength. what you know best. Yes, your, 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 your own strength and, your and using it to impact your world. I think, That's unfortunately, it. that it's not just um, like five or six years ago. Some parents still think that now that you should be a doctor or a lawyer, that should, they are white, and they are what they call white collar jobs, that you shouldn't go after, let's say, being a musician or being a footballer. But right now, uh, presently, there's a lot of money in playing football. I even wonder if I should just go register and go run after a ball and get millions of naira. I'm surprised at that because it's unfortunate. Some parents still think that right now that um, that, that you should you should go after being a doctor, you should have a degree in law, that kind of thing. But when they when you look at it closely, everybody has their everybody has their own role to play in the economy. Everybody, even the footballers, they entertain the doctors, the doctors treat um, treat the footballers. So everybody everybody is interchangeable. Everybody has their own role to play. Thank you very much. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, what do you think makes people choose one career or the other, whether it's a vocation whether it's vocation, academic results, family influence, market needs, what, what exactly 
make someone choose one career in preference to another career. Does anyone from the audience have anything to say? Um, with regards to the question, I think um, people choose career based on their personal interests or views or belief about it. If you're not interested in a particular career, then there's no point choosing it or going after it. Yeah, um, actually, um, I don't totally agree with you. I, I think um, far from personal interest and personal gains, I believe the society should also be put into consideration in um, making our career choices. Um, we should actually um, look out for um, the vacuum, what the society needs, and actually, like, like as Christians that we are, we should be the light of the world. So we should, we should find that vacuum and fill it up. I, I believe by doing so, the world would be a better place to live in. Okay. So we find a need and then we step up to fill and to meet that need. Yeah, yes, that makes sense. Okay. Um, I have a question, I think, an interesting question about students. Since we're all like students, we're all teenagers here. So um, taking it back to our level, in school, imagine, like take a student who is good at all subjects, like a wide range, like they're good at the sciences, they're good at the arts, you know, they're good at physics, chemistry, biology, and English art. Um, history. So what would that student, and that student doesn't know what they want to do, what could that student do? I think um, first um, the student has to, the person, teenager, has to pray at first because like Christian said earlier that God has a major responsibility, a major role because he brought us into this world to our parents. So the person first of all has to pray and there's, there has to be a particular um, subject that the person just shines, that just does effortlessly. So you, there has to be that part. There will definitely be because every, in that kind of situation, person, you can call the person all around or something like that. Mm -hmm. But there's a particular field that a person has to just do effortlessly without having to study or it's just something that you're just passionate about. There has to be this one thing that you just want to make a change, make an impact in. So when a person has found that particular thing, a person mm -hmm. should pray about it and a person should continue working hard towards it so that he'll be able to shine in that particular field. <laughs> I also have something to add to, um, add to that, yes. like Precious said, um, it's all about, and a person can become good in many things, you understand, but it's all about looking out for that need in society yeah. and meeting that need. Yeah. That's success, when you look out for that need and meet that need. So you can be good in this, you can be good in that, but if what you're good in is not meeting any need, no one needs you, mm. you understand? So, so nice. Like Pastor always says, do what's good for, good for God and good for people. Um, okay, so I'm going to throw the opposite question out to the audience, the other teenagers here with us today. So if we have a student who is bad at everything, they seem to be struggling in all aspects of school, what can that student do? The most important thing is that as we are Christians, we should pray about it because it's, it's not something, it's not a funny matter. We have to pray very well about it. Yeah. Okay, so one person thinks that we sh if you're not good at academics, then maybe you could be good at other things, like, I don't know, like handwork and any other thing, like outside of school, so it's not all about school. And someone else suggested that if you're not good at academic work, that the first thing you should do is to pray about it, because obviously failure is not an option for the Christian. Um, okay, well, we've had so many ideas and talked about so many things now, so I think that we should all just say our final words on what we think about teenagers with regards to our career choices. So Christian, what do you have to say about careers? A career choice is really, when it all comes down to it, it's all about you. No matter what situation you're in, whether it's, no matter what problem you're facing, no matter what success you have, it's really all about you to decide, it's up to you to make your career something great or something little. God will influence you, your teachers will influence you, your parents, if you have parents, will influence you. There are lots of influences, but it all comes down to you. Be, think, be, think, consider what's good with God and what's good with man, what man needs and what God is okay with. And no matter the career, if you have the heart, if you, have the, if you are connected to God, if you have the power, if you have the mind, the wisdom and the strength to do it, you'll make it something great in Jesus' name. Deborah, what do you have to say finally on career choices? Um, career choices are very important. It's paramount to our society these days. Um, I think <clears throat> that you should, first of all, pray about 
anything, when you want to go about make any decision, when you want to go about anything, you should first pray. And then when you pray, God will help you to discover that thing he has deposited inside of you. And tell your parents about it. Tell them that you're, you love this and you're very good. And convince them in your academics, even if it's not academical. You should like handwork crafts and whatever you, ha you can do with your hands. You convince them that this is what you're good at, this is what you love doing. Like they say that you should make your passion your profession mm -hmm. so that you'll be able to, you have fun, every, even you have fun at work. So you, you convince your parents that this is what I want to do. And you, you guys should see that this is what I'm very good, good at. And then you go to school, you talk to your, your teachers. So your teachers will develop, you give you various opportunities to choose from. And then after everything, you'll be grateful that you had God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Okay. Make your passion your profession. I think that's something we should all take into account. So um, with all of these ideas that we've discussed, I think that it's time for us to go. So um, we make sure you join us next time and um, we'll be here again talking about more issues that face teenagers today and the way that Christian teenagers should deal with them. Thank you. See you next time. is one reason why I love Love Word Plus. The ability to take television beyond television. All I need to do is just take it along with me. I never have to miss a second of my favorite TV programs. The multiple mobile formats make it available to me anytime, anywhere, and best of all, on any device. Love World Plus, taking you beyond television.